Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Doc Weez. Hello, Omni Slash. Vincent, thank you for coming to the stream. All right, let's uh, get the chat popped out. Let's get slobs running. It's a funny acronym Streamlabs OBS, the slobs. <clears throat> Life is mapping until you die. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning, the Cajun one. Well, we did it, guys. We made Twitch affiliate. It took about a week of trying. Now we just need to get some YouTube viewers over to Twitch to hit that follow and sub button. We'll get some spillover happening. Thanks, Yogi. <clears throat> you are now Papa Drift Master Ross. Oh. Kevin Durrell, I got two streams, one on Twitch and one on YouTube. Can you add lower resolutions to Twitch yet? I think so. Yeah, you can. Just hit the little cogwheel thing. Yeah, I, I added that up afterwards, too. I'm like, ah, Canadian dollars. So there's a transfer, there's a currency transfer rate change. And then that number was tripled, right? 
Because I was pretty sure that's how it was working. Only 1080 available, that's odd. Anyway, I've got a ton of work to do, and I'm falling behind, so I'm going to jump right into it, guys. Thanks to everybody joining me on YouTube and on Twitch. If you're on YouTube, consider hopping over to the Twitch live stream and hitting that follow button. And if you would like to su subscribe, that's also there now, and you can throw bits at me. Awesome. Awesome, man. Awesome. Anyway, let me pop this view to this so I can see what's happening. All right, let's go to the live scene. How's it going, everybody? I'm Drifty from Driftwood Gaming. Thank you for coming to the live stream. We're going to be working on RPG Maker MV today, Natural Explorers, where we are trying to put together a sim RPG. And this is a long time running series now. Started months ago. And I started by editing videos together and it ended up being a lot of work editing and the project seems like it was never going to get finished. So I decided to move to a live streaming format for a little while. Um, I like this format now and it, it seems to be the, the way I get more done. However, I'm not getting a ton done with these interiors. Mapping is the weakest uh, aspect for me when it comes to building a game. Getting the maps put together is the hardest part for me. Um, but we're getting better. I'm getting better at it. And... Um, we are trying different methods over this week to see what works best for our workflow. And I think trying to make a lot of doodads to cover up where the tile set doesn't quite match up is too time consuming. I don't get enough done. So I'm not gonna do that until the very end when there's a few spots that look very, very bad. I'll make an, I'll show you an example right here. I made a doodad to fix this little weird graphical thing right up here. This little weird corner but that doesn't really make a big deal and then I tried to fix this corner and I ended up making it look even more weird let me show you what's going on here it's gonna stay in the project like this uh, I don't know why it's because for a while I don't want to throw any any more time into it so I fixed this one this one looks good but then I tried to go over here and this one just looked more artifacty I'm gonna leave it like that though because at least it looks different when the tile set doesn't want to function properly with me, I'm going to change the way it looks um, with the map itself, not throwing doodads to cover stuff up and layer it. So anyway, thanks for joining me. I really appreciate it. Let's get started. I'm going to continue to map. I have to do this interior and one more interior map for the port town that we've got here. We've got this little port town, very, very small port town, more like a little podunk village with only three houses. We've got like a boat builder, we've got a fisherman, and then like a general store, and that's it. And they're they're pretty much all loggers. Uh, he's a fisherman, and he's the main logger, but anyway, there'll be like three or four people in the town. It's very motivating for myself watching you. That's awesome, Kiki Game Studios. Kiki, do you love me? Do you like the way I do RPG Maker stuff? I'm going to be over here. Okay, let's get into it. I'm glad that uh, you can find some sort of inspiration or motivation. I like to put other people's um, game dev streams on in the background. Like, you know, when I'm not streaming or recording or and I'm just trying to chill and I'll, I'll have it on the other screen on Twitch or on YouTube. Just listening to what they're doing. Sometimes I'll be like, oh, that's cool. I saw some people the other day using Spine. And I was watching Spine tutorials. I don't ha I don't even own Spine, but I'm you know when you watch tutorials on it, it's like consider getting it or not. You can make two more house, but little. Yeah, I'm gonna try to finish the three interiors today, so I better get to it, huh? So this interior is like starting one, and like I'm okay with it. It's fine, whatever. We'll you know we'll move on. Uh, this one is going to be a lot larger. This is going to be more of the fisherman's house. And I was taking examples from the town of beginning maps um, over here for like how their interiors are. I'll show you an example. They've got like different kinds of interiors where you walk in and there's like a lower part and you feel like there's some elevation to it, which I kind of like. For example, right here. And they've got like this little, this uh, nice little elevated spot so that it feels like your house is off the ground and I thought that sort of design made sense 
for a house that's along the ocean, right? So I went with that little design, elevating the house off of like a little stone platform uh, inside. Why not? We learned a lot about the tile set. This is first seed material tile set, DLC available on Steam. Um, very, very nice tile set, but you have to learn how to use it. So we learned how to use some of these corner walls and their um, corresponding tiles. So we're gonna be using these to match up with these, right? And then for the for these stone, white stone ones, we'll have to be we'll have to use these. And then for the other one, the gray brick, is this one. Right there. So we have these four tiles and then this one. And that's what we have curvy walls for. And the others we don't actually have any curvy walls for. Anywho. <clears throat> Let's start decorating. What is he going to need? He's going to need like a place to like a desk, right? A, a countertop. Maybe some displays to show what he's trying to sell. Um, let's hop over to tile set C. He's gonna want a little bedroom, right? With a, I think we'll put his bedroom over here. So let's give him a bed. Let's give him a nice little bed over here. We'll pop a bed down for him. Oh. <clears throat> that looks really nice. Against the wall. Actually, it'd be better if he go like that maybe break up the wall with something We're, we can add another wall too to break up the house you walk up and then I think this the sales spot should be like right here like where you're gonna see the counter and then like maybe some more display stuff over here and this is the guy's bedroom he's he's gonna be like a fisherman cook right he's gonna be multifaceted He's got all these fish, he's got to do something with them, so this will be like his little restaurant type of thing. I like that idea. I'm just spitballing here. Let's see if we can... Yeah, just by switching these up, it works better. Fisher shop brand message. I got all these fish, might as well do something with them. I like that. That's a that's a good little mishmash of our ideas right there. Let's incorporate that before we forget. We'll make a little sign or advertisement. Like I mean they're out in like the middle of nowhere along the ocean, so they might as well like try to like let let people know hey I'm cooking fish here come get some so let's go with like a let's put a little N sign nah cause it's not an N what about a cafe this is a cafe this little bar
You know what we need? I'm gonna have to ace bright first thing. We're gonna have to make a sign. Let's make a sign. And uh, I suppose we could pop it in as a doodad, right? And it's just gonna—it's just gonna be a sign that's got a fish on it, a grilled fish. Hey, Magda, how are you doing? Thanks for coming to the live stream. If any of you guys have any questions about RPG Maker or other engines, feel free to put them in the comments in the the live stream in the live chat. Hi, Blitz is now following. Oh. Damien is about to lose stream boss. I think if one more person follows me on Twitch, they'll they will become the next stream boss. And when the stream boss goes down, it comes back up with more health than it had before. So it's an ever-growing stream boss that gets stronger and stronger. Thank you for that follow, appreciate that. So let's go into A Sprite and make a a sign, right? So we're gonna go with the 48 by 48. And I need a palette that's gonna have, it's gonna be mostly transparent. Are we gonna have a sign sticking out of the ground? Or are we gonna have one sticking on the wall? I'm thinking out of the ground would be better. I was just making games the last few days. Nice. Making a game. You could sub to YouTubes as well. If you sub to YouTubes, it deals damage. You could sub to Twitch now. I just made affiliate yesterday. We're trying to get some spillover from YouTube into Twitch um, until we just solely stream on Twitch and then throw the video on YouTube. I'm trying to make it work the best way that I can. All I need is like a palette of some browns, probably. Maybe, maybe these browns, the rosy 42. Fantasy 24, this is gonna be a good one, okay. There's a lot of browns in this one. Or like a sign, we'll go with like a dark border. Would anyone here recommend whether whether adding all the plugs and parallax mapping and not graphics and stuff? I'm doing all the graphics myself right now before I start the game or later. Well, everybody has their own workflow, you know, and you'll have to find methods that work best for you. I know that's not a real answer. <clears throat> I know you're looking for like do this or do that. But honestly, it depends on how you want to work on your project. Dragonlord72 is now following and is now the new stream boss, guys. Dragonlord just took over and said, I'm the boss, I'm the captain now. Dragonlords is the captain now. To deal damage, you follow or you, or you sub to the YouTube or the Twitch. Or you throw bits and, or donate, but you don't have to do any of those things unless you feel inclined to do so. But yeah, like it depends on your workflow. If you're the type of person, this is too peachy, who wants to have like everything mapped out and have a plan, right? Like that's a good approach too. Have everything like on a PDF file for your storyline. Have your maps ready so that when you start the game, you can just throw those in, you know? Like, that's a valid approach. Um, I think if you want to get it done as quick as possible, just make the project already. Start it up. 
I mean, if I had to force, if you had to force my hand into recommending one way or the other, I would say make the project, just start the project, you know, just do it, you know, find that meme and just watch it over and over. Just do it, you know, over and over, just watch that. That's, that's the best example I can give you. Trying to make some texture on this, but mostly it's going to be one color. more like it's a piece of wood <clears throat> and we can just like put a fish on it we'll need like a more contrast color how do you draw a fish <laughs> let's draw oh no we need to go back to the pit you gotta draw a fish now guys Looks more like a whale. <laughs> All right, figure it out. Is the fish radioactive? Apparently so. I just wanted it to contrast very, a lot. So I put a, a bright outline on like a dark log thing. It needs like a top fin. It is a weird looking fish.
let's add a little bit of dark brown just a not too much because I want it to bleed into the thing <clears throat> but it's gonna be all in a small little thing man that is weird okay it's fine don't worry about it don't worry about it we're gonna fix it <laughs> I think we gotta we gotta move on. Let's do a last little bit touches right here at the end. Let's fix his little. How does a dorsal fin even look? That's his dorsal. What is the back fin called? I don't know fish. I like fish though. Fish is delicious. Draw an infinity symbol, but just make one side flat. Should have did that. Would I recommend Sprider Pro or the Sakan Mato Gene uh, tools? Um, Sprider Pro is better. Sprider Pro is good. My wife has it. Um, I like Spine. I don't own it though. I've only watched tutorials on it, I'm trying to see if I should invest the money in it. I have luscious hair. <laughs> Thank you. Quick question, did you check out your my game? Hi Blizz, I've seen a lot of games. Um, no offense, like I can't remember. Maybe, maybe, I probably have on, the, the quick answer is yes, I probably have seen it. I don't remember to enough which one like to give you feedback. If you would like to get a first impressions video made, I offer that on my Patreon as a service. So if you just back me on Patreon at the $20 level, I can get you a video made on a Friday, potentially on a weekend as well. Um, so that that offer is always there, Hi Blitz, on my patreon.com slash driftwood gaming page. It does look like a whale. Uh, maybe the color scheme makes it look a little bit less like a whale. But I'm going to leave that. I think that's kind of cool. From natural explorers to big fish hunters. So I am in the Goacle It looks like a rabbit with a big butt. Says Magda. Trying to catch up on the chat. <clears throat> that's cool. You guys are all helping each other too. That's what, that's one thing I like about the Discord. I, we set up the Discord links in the description below, and there's just hundreds of people there who log in and show off their work and like when people ask questions you know you get feedback from different people and different people's opinions and it's really cool to uh, have a community of like-minded individuals and uh, people who, who like making games and creating media you know 
So um, that's really cool. Let's save this. We're going to export this as dg underscore um, fish sign 01. That'll work as a PNG. And what we'll do is, you know what we could do is make this a sprite sheet. Instead of making a doodad, let's just put it right in the game. Less doodads is better. The, the less we have to use doodads, the better, right? It's awesome that we have that functionality, but we should be able to just make this its own image. It doesn't need to be animated. It's just a sign. Signs don't really need to be animated. We could animate it though. You know, I have an idea. It wouldn't be hard to animate it. Now that I think about it. All we need is three frames. How would we do that? Let's make some uh, like little vines that are growing off of it. Right? <clears throat> Let's use two colors. Okay, and what we'll do is create a new frame, and on the second frame, all we're going to do is move over these little thingies. Let's go like this, 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 one, five, six. Let's create a new frame. And the same thing. We'll put this one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. And then we'll take this. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. <clears throat> One, two, three, four, No, that one looks too weird. Two, 
just enough to get the player's attention. Right? And then here's the trick with a sprite. When you're trying to copy frames over, you can't just copy paste. We've gone through this um, before. Like it's just a pain in the butt. So here's the trick. You create a new empty frame. Like we can delete this frame. Well, hold up. Like this is our empty frame for reference, right? We're gonna take four. We're gonna delete everything there. So that's our empty frame. Then you take frames one, two, and three. You copy those, you go to the fourth frame and you paste and it pushes the frame that you're on in front of everything. You're like, why shouldn't it be behind? Because then there's no way to select one. Right, you think that, but that's why we put an empty frame because it's going to, it's going to leave, it's going to leave those. Now what we need is 12 because we're gonna export four rows and three columns. Trying to post a photo on Discord, but you're not a member? Well, I can make you a member real quick. I do that after and before, pretty much all day I'm going through checking people um, to, to see if they have member and, and whatnot. <clears throat> so I can make you a member real quick. That'll let you interact with people. If you want to check for paying work, there's paying work here. There's also um, a place where you can offer your services right here. If you wanna talk about a specific game engine, they're all here. If you're a YouTuber, shoot me the link in a private message. You just right click my name and, well, I can't message myself, but you click message and it'll send me a private message. And um, I'll put your link in here to, sh to show all the YouTubers on the channel. Same thing with live streamers. If you're a live streamer, we can put your link in here. If you're a coder, you wanna show off your code, there's code dump, or if you need help with code, you can go to the code dump. Showing off your work in the art museum. If you're just working on something, you wanna show off what you're working on. There's a lot of talented artists here who constantly show off what they're working on. It's really, really cool. I appreciate all you guys for, for coming in. Here we go, Monty, you're a member now. And then for the, the general chat is default font here. There you go. So links in the description for that. If you join right now, let me know. I'll add you as a member. What are you guys saying? What are you guys talking about? We made that animation right there. Also, there's a self promo tab. Yep. If you want to advertise your stuff, you're perfectly, it's perfectly fine to advertise your whatever, you know, your game, your project, your Steam, your itch page, whatever. Go to self promo to do it though. There's a special tab and you could advertise whatever you're working on and uh, if, you, if you go live or whatever, you know, self promo right there. It's really awesome. Now, the reason why we're doing nine frames is because we want this to be on a sprite sheet, right? So we're gonna copy these, go to our blank one and, and paste, and then we're gonna do the same thing again, paste. One, two, three, copy these, paste. And this, since this is, uh, and then we finally, we delete that 13th image, we don't need that. But this gives us the, the steady image, so it doesn't matter what um, way the thing is considered to be facing, it has um, all four facings, if you forget to check the the box that ignores um, direction, it still looks the same. Because we want the player to see the image, so it doesn't make sense to have it at the back of it. To export this, you go export sprite sheet. Sorry, this uh, this is a little bit too many lyrics, too much too much lyrics going on. Let me let me fix the music. The music's s -s 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 -s. Let's go with uh, uh, this one, yeah, yeah, that's cool. And pop out chat. So we're gonna export the sheet by rows and three columns. And we're gonna use 144 by 48 for the single row, right? So we're using 144, 144 uh, pixels on the row and then the height of the row is 48. And then we're gonna put that in three columns, or wait, the, wait, the width is gonna be that for the rows, and we're gonna put that in three columns, right? Columns at the top down. Hopefully that makes sense. I don't want to confuse anybody. DG underscore animated fish sign 01. And we're gonna save that wherever you put it. Just remember where you put it. Export that. Now all we have to do is go to where we put it. I put mine in an A sprite folder. 
so I can keep all of my A sprite things in one spot. And we're going to copy this and we go into the games project now. We go into IMG and we're going to put this in characters and paste it in here. We're going to go to there and paste it here. We'll hit F2 and we're going to press home, up, home, and we're going to type exclamation point dollar sign. To let the engine know that this isn't a set of eight um, images, it's only a single image that's animating. Now, if we look inside of our engine, we may have to save the project and then like close the database, open the database type thing. But if we go here, we look in images, we should have the thing we just created animated fish sign so we're gonna put on stepping we're gonna put on direction fix and yeah stepping will just go through the patterns and this is gonna be called fish sign and it'll say I'm catching a bunch of fish I might as well do something with them stop on by for a uh, not a free meal stop on by to fill up on fish best deals in town. <laughs> the, the funny thing is it's a tiny little town. Best deals in town. Exclamation. That's not a full sentence though, but that's fine. We've got the best we've got the best deals in town. The Message core plugin is gonna like fix this. So if it doesn't like line up correctly or whatever, it'll be fine. I'm catching a bunch of fish, I might as well do something with them. Stop on by to fill up on fish. We've got the best deals in town. It's a little promo sign, an animated promo sign to get the player's attention. We'll put that like right here to break up this little dead space. And he's obviously trying to put this next to his house too. I would say I want the sign closest to this house because this is where we're going to be for that. And it would be by a road or a little... So it makes sense that it would be like right here. Right? Okay. We need to look at this in game. Hey, Bushy. Oh, I need to set up the transfer event. Let's set up a transfer event. Let's copy this one. Paste it here. Transfer zoom and go to this spot. Yeah. Wait. Yeah, player touch. There's our animated sign. Hey, it's got some little viney tendrils blowing in the wind. Right? How about that? I'm catching a bunch of fish. I need to put like a, either a show picture of a sign in the background or, um, or just a dim. I should just put it as a dim instead of transparent. Transparent is, is, is not right for a sign. It's cool to see our weather. Royal! I see you. I notice you. I saw your image. There's our animated sign. Can I show people? I'm gonna show people your image. Hold up. 
Let me find it. Because, dude, that's really cool. Boom. Guys, look what Royal made. This is going to be like a more detailed... This isn't final version. This is a, like a rough draft idea. Royal's making this um, like map. The Not like the game map, but like it's going to be the world map, but probably like a show picture version of, of the world map. I need to add this, this little, I kept saying this is the shallows and I made it really shallow, but I haven't put any islands here. I like what you did with this little area. This looks really natural and cool. Like a tropical area. I want to put like lots of holes for the water and maybe like a lake in the middle of it too. That looks really cool. Lots of detail, little tiny islands all over the place. I like it. It's really cool. I need to figure out what I'm going to do for all of the frost area and the desert area. Like, I don't have good tile sets for this. I did get a message from Christ History about making uh, not lots of small maps, because that's boring for Cries. But Cries let me know that my progress is very s stale which I know it takes a long time for me to make maps since I'm working on my weakest point uh, but I am getting better at it and anyway Cries offered to do another map maybe two if we're lucky um, Cries is the one who put together the majority of the maps in the game like these were I'm sure fun at first and then they eventually got boring they're just repeating all these caves but Cries made this whole section of caves which look really nice and they match the other caves I've done and then I took one and put a little background on it and made it transparent but Cries does huge maps like this is the type of map that Cries likes to do as far as I can tell look at this giant massive graveyard map this is beautiful fantastic work and we've done a lot of work um, getting the events to to fit in the game and change transfer events so that it actually works as, as a functional part of this project. And I um, I like the format that was done using self switches to do all the gates and everything because it made it easy, right? I didn't have to change, make switches and change switches that I'm using or use change the ones that were from the other project. So Cries, I really appreciate your work and thank you so much for your continued interest in helping this project come to fruition. I really appreciate that. But yeah. So we have to decide, um, like, the next step, right? After we... We don't need another graveyard. This is a plenty big enough graveyard. It's the biggest map in the game, that's for sure. Um, and I was asked, what do I need the most? And I basically said, um, whatever you're most inspired to do, um, because all of it was appreciated. But I already have a lot of ice islands, like this giant continent up here. With nothing to put on it and no real good tile set or maps to, to throw in here. So I'm going to say probably something like frosty. Like some frosty maps. Frosty caves, frosty... Hopefully not a lot of caves, but like mountain range. Um, towns, really need some towns. But also the desert isle that we haven't put in here, but I talked about. Um, we need like a desert here. So we need some desert maps, right? I think... Uh, White Dragon put out some uh, Egyptian theme stuff. Was it White Dragon who did the Egyptian theme stuff? They look really cool, so I might use some of those resources uh, for the for the desert. As for like the tropical island, I could still use FSM stuff. I'm pretty sure something with the forest and maybe import some other stuff. Yeah, there's no FSM for ice tiles. That's something that I would buy. If, F, if they put out another FSM tile set or something on that level, DLC pack, I would buy the um, like an icy FSM pack for like frosty mountains, you know, frosty mountains. And, and a world map for that, like a world map themed 
DLC for tile sets. Like the tile sets are the things that you need the most in uh, in the game. So that's what I can feel like to justify my purchase price, you know. And overall, for the resources you get, it's not that expensive. I recommend FSMs. I hope they put out more. But moving on. Okay, I've got to get this map and another map done today. I need to get these interiors knocked out already. I had to animate a sign though, okay? I needed to animate a sign. We needed a fish sign. It just needed to happen, an animated fish sign. <laughs> I could Volpe, but do you see how long it takes me to do every little thing? <clears throat> If there was more land, dog, there would be way too much stuff to make, dog. 8.5 out of 10 for me, dog. It's going to be a no for me, dog. <laughs> this is not the final world, Mushri. You can't look at everything as a comp as its final form, you know. It's not even overpower level 9000 yet. Hey, Proud Rubble, how are you doing today? We need some windows. Gosh, I need to focus. Gotta focus. Ugh. Let's put some windows down. Window right here in his room. Window right there. And then, you know what we could do? Put a window here. Hold on, undo this. Put a window here. I wanna take all of this, move it over to here. Go like this and like this, and then take a window Wait, that looks funny. Oh my gosh, hold up. The window right there doesn't work. It does work right here though, and I think we're gonna just stick with that. That's it. What we can do is a, a side beam, like a sun beam from the side. Maybe we'll do that with doodads. We have some, like, sunbeam type things going on here. Yeah? Just gotta find the right ones. What is this? It's hard to see on this transparent tile, but you can see if you... What? Is this shadowing built in? Let's see. Or is this the shadow? Oh, let's get rid of that. Okay, cool. Now we can do this. Let's just do that. Fantastic. Okay, and then what about for here? really hard to see. Let's go like this. Bang. And then take the one we want. <clears throat> we probably want this first one. Alright, so let's undo that, take this first one and go like this. Wait, is this the first one? There we go. That's the one we want.
Any tile sets unless they're text adventures? Hey Ahmed, how are you doing? We're working on the interiors of the port town here. We just made an animated sign, which we'll show at the end again. Anyone know how to make categories in a shop menu to tab between? If you have a lot of things for sale, it can take a while to scroll between. Volpe, you can set up a menu in your, uh, like, event it, so that you can let the player choose sections, like, um, would you like to browse my wares, and then show a drop list for, like, weapons, armors, accessories, blah, 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 blah. Or you can have multiple um, vendors, right? so that you can just show the weapons, and then it's just a smaller list, and then just show the armors, right? I would I would kind of go through that, but it's pretty simple, right? You make a show choice, and inside of each of those choices, you put a different shop processing event. I do not play Fortnite, Proud Rebel. It's too hot for me. Oh, you're currently doing that, but wasn't sure if there was a way to do it. You can check out, um, hopefully you're already using Yanfly's um, Shop Core. I think it's called Shop Core. It's a great plugin. It really, uh, you really need to be using it if you're not using another, uh, like, vendor program, shop program, because it, it really gives you more space for your items. Where's it at? Shop menu core. Yep. And you can change the settings in here too. If you combine this with uh, the currencies, the more currency plugin, you can have shops that sell things based on like this. You can have a drop down list and put like a, what you could have to have special currency to buy this type of thing, or, you know. Buy Ekuman or Ekuman's brother. Yeah, I imagine there should be Volpe. And there's probably several clever ways to do it. I would prefer several or smaller vendors than just one vendor with everything, because then you give the player analysis overload. It's just too much for them to see sift through at one point. But like have a couple vendors at one, one spot or even have one vendor guy, but you access the shop from like going to a table, right? Like all the weapons are on the table and you go to that table and then that shows all the weapons in the menu. And then you go to like another armor section and then that opens the pro shop processing there at that point in the store. So you can have like the weapons over here and then the armors over here and then accessories over here. And the guy's just sitting behind the counter. And you talk to him and he's like, check out my wares, they're on the table or you know, or give the player some sort of indication that they have to go there to buy them. As long as it's not like too convoluted it, and like, uh, it would be a nice way to present shops. A limited shopkeeper cash sum. Isn't there a plugin for that? Like how much money a shopkeeper can have? Hime Works may have done a plugin like that. Let me check. Um, limited, um, vendor, gold, RPG Maker MV plugin. Three tiered gold, nope. Is it SRD? SRD might have one. Scrubbing, hold on, scrubbing a video. Price multipliers in there. What else do we got? Is that it? Sell price. Yeah, that's not it. I 
I've seen lots of uh, plugins that have limited sh like stock. Like they're only they'll, they'll only sell like twenty two or forty five potions, or you know, like they'll only sell one of this item, and then you have to like wait a certain amount of time. There's plugins like that out there. But I don't know how to make it so that the shopkeeper will only have a set amount of gold and you can't get that, you can't get more gold. Uh, using the shop processing function, you can do this if you event the whole thing, right? But I don't know um, how to do that. There's one for incremental item pricing here. Anyway, here, here let me show you a Reddit post. I can pop in a, a Reddit post for you. This is different though. This is not even what you're asking. This is about incremental pricing and stuff. Devin, Scott, how are you doing? You broke your game. How'd you break your game? Hey, Sugar Zuzu, how you doing? With bugs? Well, at least it wasn't like a jank problem where you change the version and then everything's broke because you changed the version and the plugins don't. That's the worst, dude. When you, you upgrade, you're like, oh, I'm using 1.4. Let's try 1.5. Holy crap, nothing works anymore. The game doesn't even load. You have to go through all your plugins and disable them one at a time to see what's breaking it. And sometimes it's like five plugins. Nightmare. If it's bugs, you know, you just backtrack, right? Look at the last thing you did and then um, try to like turn off that plugin if you added a plugin and, and see if the game runs without that. And then you can be like, okay, this is what's causing it. When, once you find the problem, you can like figure out how to work around that problem. Is Are they unknown bugs, Devin, or are they just bugs that you don't know how to fix? Accidentally placed the debug sword. Vincent, that would be a cool idea for like a, uh, what is it, like Sid Meier's Pirates type game where you have to like buy stuff when there's a high stock and then you get a good price on it and then you have to go across to another area to sell it when there's like a scarcity and then you buy different things there and like sell back and forth. If you've ever played Sid Meier's Pirates, that would be a cool plugin for that type of game. If that plugin exists, then that type of game could, could work just like that. Driftwood Gaming, if you had $100 to put towards game art or Patreon, what would you choose? Not trying to spam, just curious. What do you mean? If, if I had to spend $100 on game art for my project? Um, I don't know. That's a tough question. I pr There's a lot of things I need, and depending on the quality and the experience of the person is how much I would get out of it. Um, I would probably pay somebody to um, make me a new tile set. Someone might make a tile set for a hundred bucks. Custom tile set. Barring that, um, I do need some like bust art to show pictures when people are talking. Like I wanna get Jinx, I wanna get a picture of, let me show you. Like this is a face image by Mushri, but I would like a new bust art like so that I can instead of just showing a face I can show like a entire bust of pics of of Jinx and like a higher resolution if you know what I mean and obviously you know to make it sell to make the game sell you know what I'm talking about you know what I'm talking about as well as better art for um for the male and the female choices like something for Edmund and something for Mars. <laughs> Ami knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> but I would throw it at that. Holy crap, I need to do these maps. Son of a gun. If we don't get these maps done, we ain't gonna eat no rolls. If we don't pay these souls, we ain't eat no rolls. 
All right, so this is a little diner type area. He catches fish, so he needs like a little storage area where he's got like barrels and, uh, you know, he's, he's got stuff for like uh, the guests, you know, they'll probably, he, he doesn't have a lot of patrons probably to his establishment. So he's just got a few tables. Let's get a couple of tables set up here. You know, he's just got a little area with like maybe Yeah, three tables, like this and like this. Jorge Nunez just subscribed. Thank you so much for the subscription. I appreciate that. Dealing damage to the Dragon Lord. I like it. I like it. How about that? That'll look. That'll look fine. Let's get some some tables. Uh, we got the tables. Let's get some chairs set up here. He'll have some wooden boxes from the other guy, the carpenter guy. Probably would have him... Actually, we need like a barrel of fish. Does he have like a, a bunch of... A, we have a, something for fish here? He would probably have like a table of fresh greens to cook with. No, he's not an alchemist. He would probably have some sort of scale, right, for weighing fish, but not not that kind of scale. Here we go. Yeah, these are the, right here. This is the ones we're talking about. Like he's gonna have some fish on hand. Let's get one of these big fish over here. Yep. That's fine. They're just thrown on the table. He's got limited workspace. Limited workspace here. We could give him some more space, but I think two burners? I mean, that makes sense. He's gonna run some sort of establishment. What looks mostly like food? This looks mostly like food. Let's put this right there yeah yeah there you go oops yeah nope yeah but how is it gonna reach to that side no it, it would make sense if we go like this player could walk right there and walk around it this breaks up that dead space too so that's good not too many bread products, because, you know, he's not really a baker, he's a fisherman. He's like, he serves proteins and, and like, veggies and stuff. We need more fish. More fish. We need more fish. Okay, we're going to have to doodad some fish up in here. Let's do dad some fish. Anyone here played Monster Boy series? Monster Boy? No. Is that RPG Maker Project? Let's place some food. There we go, food. Fish? Let's put a fish on the table here. It's a nice, big, juicy fish. Yeah. Okay, what else? What else do we got over here? Hanging spices. Let's put some hanging spices. Uh, right over here. Off to the side a little bit. Yeah. Um, kebabs. On the grill. Let's put some kebabs on the grill. Um, knives? Yeah. Fisherman's gonna need a sharp set of knives. Kind of looks like a gun. If you look, if you look on the left ones, they look like a couple of pistols and a knife. It looks really weird. But anyway, we'll pretend that's a cutting board and some knives. Uh, hold up. We'll 
we'll go with like a couple of smaller plates and tweak the settings on this. Let's change the sizes to 60%, 50%, yeah. He doesn't need a third stove. We can put a, let's see, a teapot right here. Let's, oh, let's select the teapot but change the size just a little bit. Let's go with like 80% or 75 will work. Except, put a teapot here. Nice. Okay, what else do we got? It's gonna have a bottle of wine on the table here. A couple of glasses. We're gonna need some chairs. Okay, let's go to. Gotta be careful with that escape button. You escape too many times, it erases all of them. Um, chairs. Nice, nice. A stool would work, but maybe we'll put something else like this wooden chair. Because everything should be made out of wood, pretty much. Let's go like this, and then one for this. Do we have anything else? With, like, okay, we're going to have to work with that. And then left and right for this guy. And I think maybe left and right for here too. And the fact that they're not perfectly lined up to the tile set will make them only look better. Okay. What else are we missing? We'll have one empty table. We'll have this right here. This fish needs to be smaller. So let's edit doodads. Let's go to this fish and uh, change its size a little bit, you know, it needs to be a little bit smaller, it's kind of big. Okay, change the position a little bit, let's put it right here, nope, right here, that'll work. And uh, accept the settings, now we gotta make sure we save here, return, finish our edit, and save and close, otherwise it will erase all of them. Done it a million times, I think we all have It kind of appears that we walk. Okay, I want this tile to be passable. So I'm gonna change the tile set a little bit. Because you have this one passable and this one not. Which I understand you don't want it to be because you don't want the player to walk through the table, but we can fix that in the tile set and I'll show you how. So let's do that real quick. We'll go to the tile set. Wait, hold on. First, we need to find out what are we looking at. This is the tile that is in the FSM inside, Town of Beginnings inside, and that stool is on C. Okay, so now that we know that, we're going to go to our tile sets, FSM, Town of Beginnings inside, on C, which will be right here. This is selected as an X. I want to go in the dir four directions and say that you can pass left or right, right here. But you can't go up and down. So we'll go to passage, we'll set this as a star, but we'll change this so that you can't go up or down. Right, so it's starred, but you can only go left or right. Let's see what happens. I'm not exactly 100% sure. I've never tried to do it just like that. But I think technically we should be able to walk behind it but not walk through it. Yep. Oh no, we can walk through it, unfortunately. That's pretty lame.
Also, if we set it to star, um, we have the problem where it puts the um, doodads in the wrong spot. I mean, which I could change, that's not a big deal. In fact, let's just do that, because I do want this to be able to walk left and right through it. So let's edit our doodads. Um, basically, we just need to raise them up like this above the player. But then when we walk in front, yeah, you know, anyway, let's try this. We're just gonna go like that. Layer, hanging can stay the same, those can stay the same. All we're changing is what is presented on the tables, which would be this one. Raise this one up, accept. What else is it? The wine glass, raise this one up, accept the settings. Wine glass, raise it up, raise it up. Do it again. Right click to go back, finish our edit, save and close. Wait, see that fixed that, no problem. Only problem here is that we can walk through, we can walk through the table. Walking through the chairs, I don't really care about. I feel like it's a convenience for the player to not block them off. But walking through the table is what I would consider immersion breaking. So that's lame. Let's see what we can do about that, if anything. Do we have to settle for putting these in as doodads and then restricting a specific spot? I hope not. So even, even though we have passage left and right, Because basically it needs to be like this for this passage thing to work. But then it's going to look like the player is walking on top of it, which is also immersion breaking. So now we'll fix the you can't walk through it up or down, but it'll cause a problem so that we looks like we're walking through it. See, we can't walk up and down, right? But then we can... It looks like we're walking on the table. See that? Still not quite right. We also encounter the issue where putting this stuff on layer six makes it draw above the player. So if the player is behind it, it looks like it's in the sky above them, you know, which is not right at all. So we'll have to put those back on layer five. I just wanted to try things. We're always experimenting to find better methods. We're just gonna have to leave that X. So you can't walk on it. Put things back on layer five. So you can't walk on that right there. You have to walk all the way out here. It feels clunky. But you can walk through here. We have to take the lesser of evils. Do this real quick. Now if we walk behind it, we can't walk on this tile, unfortunately. There is a way we can do this, we might want to do that, but I don't know how much time I want to throw at it now at this point. I'm going to leave it like this for now, but I can put these in as a doodad, these tables, and then just use region restriction. So instead of having these tables as two, I can scrunch these tables up to make it one tile and just re restrict that one tile. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I know, Doc. 
I'm trying to not have to do that. Can you add a huge stuffed fish on the wall? That would be a great idea. He's a fisherman. And we'll have him talk about the one that got away. Like, man, we found this giant huge fish, blah, blah, blah. But she broke my line or something like that. <laughs> and then we'll have like a patron being like, yeah, sure, we heard that one before, blah, blah, blah. A siren on the wall would be funny. Devin says, I'm trying to make a dungeon floor with an event of steps to the exit. How can that be evented? An event of like how many steps? Well, that's easy, Devin. There's like three ways to do that. The, the fastest, easiest way is to use a common event plugin. And I have a first question. Does your dungeon already have regions pasted all over it? Do you have regions pasted all over it? Like where the player can walk? If not, then the best way is to use Yanfly's um, region events and then paste the region events on every step that can be walked on. Make it call a common event that common event that you wanted to call will be something very simple. It'll be like, it'll be like this. Um, Cause you're gonna call this common event every time you step on a tile that can be walked on with the region. So you step on a region um, where the player can walk, it calls a common event and all that's going to do is add to a variable, right? So you're gonna be like change variables. Where'd he go, where'd he go, where'd he go, where'd he go? Put it right here. Uh, walk count or step count. Step count var variable, right? You're just gonna add one to that variable. And then what you can do is make a conditional branch that says, if the step count um, variable is greater than or equal to whatever steps you're supposed to have happen, then do the thing, right? And the thing could be turn on a switch that makes other stuff happen. This could be uh, activate other stuff on map, other map stuff, right? So this can just turn on a switch and that's it. So you walk on it, it adds one, adds one, adds one. If they ever get to 100, turn on that switch that activates another event. Essentially, I want the player to have 100 steps to exit. Also, how would I show that on the screen too? You just, um, well, I don't know, you use several ways to do that, to show the number of steps on a screen. Any way that you can show a variable on the screen. Um, I would suggest if you don't use SRD's um, like menu plugin to show variables on screen, uh, that's, a, that's one way to do it. But if you don't do that, you can um, have a...
So every time you call this common event with the region, um, Yanfly regions, it, it does this, right? Can I do this super quick? Let's go, let's see. Let's say region 100, right? You would, you would paste 100 wherever you could walk. And inside your Yanfly region, um, region events, you go to region 100 or whatever you're using, cancel, and you have it call your common event that we're creating. Super easy idea. Boom. So now it's calling, wait, 39, why 39? Is it really 39? Oh yeah, okay, because common event 39, right, gotcha. So you're calling whatever common event you put uh, on whatever region you select. So paste the number and then go into the, the plugin settings. You saw how I did that. And then in that common event, you're having it add one to a variable. And then you make a condition that says, if your, um, your variable is over uh, that amount, equal or over that amount, uh, what Drifty would do to avoid mapping. I mean, this, this is so much more fun than mapping, you know, putting together a little event system. But I just want to show and prove it works. So we have our starting position. If we walk on any of these things, we'll get the gab window pop up, letting us know how many steps we've taken. And if we've taken over 100 steps, let's not do 100 though, let's make it, uh, let's make it 20 so I can do it quickly. If I've taken over 20 steps it, steps, it turns on a switch, and that switch can do other stuff, like right here, this could be your auto run event, right? And then this will happen after that variable is over 20, or uh, the switch. You don't even need a switch, really. You can just turn on the thing when a variable is over that number. But you can have multiple, is what I'm saying. It'll be like, ha ha, I found you, blah blah. And then he like does a battle processing because that's what happens. I'll show that link, Volpia. So now we walk over here, seven steps have been taken, eight steps have been taken, nine, ten, you see that? Eleven and blah, 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 twenty steps have been taken, and he shows up. Of course, I should have made that an auto run, but you get the point, right? Boom, haha, I found you, blah, blah, and then, you know, he kills you. He smashes your brains, bang, bang, and you're dead. Boulders, bang. Anyway. The game you're making is a roguelike and each floor has a challenge to it. So everybody gets stuck sometimes. Cool. Alright, you understand. Nice. No problem, man. I'm glad to help. Anything to avoid mapping, pretty much. Alright, he can be deleted. In fact, let's uh, clean up. We'll do a clean up. I don't need this event. You got it, right? You got it. Alright. And uh, let's clean up our switches real quick. We don't need step count variable here. Okay, okay, okay. We don't need a, a switch for activate other map stuff, right? Okay, hold up. Okay, 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 okay. All right, so are we gonna put these tables and doodads? Eventually we are, but right now I'm gonna leave them on the map like so. Um, we've got some doodads around. We need to place the NPC, right? We need to put the NPC in. I feel like I busted my ass off for a week and only finished three maps, but they turned out amazing, so whatever. Yeah, yeah. How would you know what region does what? Is it custom made? Vincent, it shows you in the, uh, like, like, you can essentially pick any region you want, right? I picked a 100 arbitrarily. And then you you can, let's do another one. Like, so I'm going to say region 82, right? And you paste 
you draw 82 wherever you want. Now you just have to tell the plugin what region 82 does. So you go in the plugin. I have to go here to do the cleanup anyway. You go to region events and you go to whatever number you want, right? You arbitrarily picked what? We darn it, 80, 82. So we picked 82, right? So we're gonna say when we walk on 82, what do you want to happen? Well, whatever you want, right? So it's arbitrary the number and it's arbitrary the number of the common event, the region. And you yeah, you get to decide what region you paste and you get to decide what each one does using the plugin. You just kind of, you have to link them together in the plugin itself, in the parameters of the plugin, yeah. Just like that. But anyway, I needed to go in here to delete this one. Actually, we'll specify zero, which, Pretty much it. Put this up. Where'd my chat go? Where'd my chat go? Where's my chat? Okay, cool. The doodads folder is gonna be huge. Should you go turn-based combat using Olivia's stuff or ABS using Chrono? Um, I mean, Olivia's is easier to use. It's pretty much plug and play. If you go with with uh, like the Chrono trigger type of combat, it's very cool if done right. But you really have to put in some custom artwork if you want to resize. Otherwise, you're going to be locked into the default size, right? So you're going to have to remake the whole graphical user interface or it's gonna look like every other copy paste Mog Hunter project, right? And Mog Hunter projects stuff is amazing, but it's just like a default thing, you know? Like everybody has the, the default project, the, the demo project, and if you don't change the demo project, it's not impressive at all. It's just like, oh, it's just Mog Hunter. That, they're not gonna be, they'll be impressed with the system, but they're not going to accredit that to you. That They're accrediting, accrediting that to Mog Hunter because Mog Hunter did that, right? So you have to put in the extra work to make the GUI a different size, resize the game, um, change and make all the skills and learn how that plugin works. It's complicated. Um, if you wanna go through all that, in the end result, you'll have a more unique game going with the Chrono, Mog Hunter's Chrono system, right? But it's a lot of work and it's complicated. It's not like as easy plug and play. With Olivia's, you basically put it in the game and your system, your combat system's different and it's like that. So it depends, right? What do you wanna do? You wanna do a lot of work, making a whole entire new GUI using a different system or do you just wanna put a plug in and make the combat different? It's up to you. I use Olivia's in this in this game. Demo says, "Hey Drifty and Chat, qu question: Did you integrate the Terax lighting with your weather system? Do you have a tutorial on that? Right now, my weather system is very small. It consists of a few maps that has a random percent chance to rain. Right? Volpe says, "Shh, don't tell everyone to use Olivia's Octopath Battler before it, it turns into the next Mog Hunter." Yeah, that's fine. I mean, essentially, it will be the default. It is the best system out there right now uh, as far as ease of use and like layout and design. Plus, it's the most relevant due to Octopath Traveler's success, right? It makes the most sense. The paywall? I am so happy there's a paywall because that will stop it from being on every crappy project. People have to invest money in their project, and I'll tell you what, there's this thing I call the bullshit filter. And if you put a small little paywall in front of um, some assets or like say getting promotional content, like I have a small paywall in front of doing first impressions, and it saves me such a headache because I don't have to play any of the bullshit games, right? They have to be willing to invest money in their project in order to get, uh, you know, the publicity and the extra cri uh, criticism and the extra bit of uh, 
feedback and basically my my time my mind and and other people's time as well and like the same thing for getting resources so putting a bullshit filter a small little paywall uh, in front of your assets or your your service your product whatever um, is is beneficial to everybody in the end That's true. Uh, Olivia's Octopath Battler system is not just a battle system. It has a lot of plugins built in. If you have it, you get um, the battle system, which is all you need to, to run as a whole, one plugin, right? But it also, it's broken down very conveniently into subsequent plugins, right? So the battle system consists of all of these plugins. And you can turn off the battle system whole thing and turn on just the parts that you want so it's customizable and you don't have to use the entire thing as a whole you can use just this this and this of the eight to ten parts so you can see I have all of these off because I'm using the whole thing and in the whole thing you have a comprehensive list of parameters I feel like I'm doing a, a promo piece on the battle trap the octopath battle traveler <laughs> but whatever rightly so it's fantastic i do need to get this map done holy crap we're not going to get three done i'll be happy if i get this second one done um we got the chairs in it looks it looks less complete than it is we actually have doodads let's look at it in here okay it's still big, open. We need something to break this area off to private, to make it like private. And we need like an event here. The chef needs to be in the thing, in the, the kitchen, cooking. We can use some other events right here. The chairs are not placed in a, in a way that works. The chairs need to be higher. So raise these chairs higher. And let's, let's remove this chair and actually put it right here. Hold on. Where's it at? Put it right here. Okay, so raise these, all of these four chairs. Erase this one and move it to right there. And I think I can make it look and feel better in game. All right. Oh, what am I doing? Doodads are in game. some future base stuff going on here. I don't know. I don't know about that. I don't know about that. Let's just go back here. I like this little very video gamey soundy thing. Make a list in Discord for the maps you need so we the community can help fill in some of the gaps. Don't forget to also test with the taller sprites. That's true. That's true. Let's edit these doodads. I need to move the chairs, right? So this chair, wait, where is it at? Change position, that's this one. Let's raise it up to about right here. Got him, okay, except next one. Change position, raise it up a little bit like that. Got him, except next one. Um, delete this one, okay. We'll move on and get added at the end. This one. Uh, you know what? That one's fine. Whatever. We'll go with this one. Raise it up. Change position. Like right here. Be better. Got him. And this one. Change the position. Right here. Okay. We'll accept that. Go back. Finish our edit. I need to place a new doodad. Go back to chairs. Find the right side one right here and place one like right here against the wall a bit uh -huh. and then go back go back carefully save and close and now let's take a look the chairs need to be below okay the left and right chairs need to be below this one's perfect Right. 
Are... This one seems to be below. I must have moved them. I must have changed them. Okay, hold up. Edit the doodads. This one. Let's go under player. Accept. Next one. Under the layer. Accept. That one's fine. I mean, I'm gonna leave that there. I think the positioning is why it looks that way. Under layer. We, it, we might still have to go back and, and fine tune this. This one was was fine as well. That one can't be under because it's, a, it's in front. Finish edit, save and close. What are we looking at here? That works. Okay, that works. I do need to test with the other sprites. That works. That works. That works. Okay. You know what? We're looking good. The only the discrepancy I have is I can't walk on this one tile. And if I allow that with region restriction, which I can, I might end up looking like I'm on top of the table. I'm going to try it anyway. I've got region 77 set up to be, if I draw it, it will be passable. So if I go like this, and like this, and like this, the player will be able to walk on it. And I don't want them to walk on the table. They'll also be able to walk straight through the table, which probably is not right. Oh no, they, they're not able to. Oh, okay. The thing about this is you also have to go like this, which I like because then it stops me from letting the player walk through the table. Boy, quit playing. Quit playing, boy. Look at that. That act look, it does look like he's walking on the table a little bit. You know what? I don't know. Oh, wait. Why are we able to walk through the table right there? Oh, because we're able to walk onto it. That's the downside. So you can't walk down like that. Oh, wait, maybe I can fix that? 85 is, no, then you won't be able to walk through it at all. Hold on, what if I change the bottom part of the tile set? We're, we're trying some things. We're trying to, to get some control of the game right now. If I can just think straight, that would be great. Thank you. Tile set. I know I know it doesn't seem like we're getting much done, but we're we're learning, right? We're getting we're working on our ability to manipulate things to our whim. Every whim. I don't words right, but that's okay. Let's change the direction on this so that you can't walk down onto it like that. Is that how it works? You can't walk onto this tile coming down. Thinking is dangerous. Agreed. There it is. Okay, wait, can we walk up to it? Oh, no, it doesn't let us now. Oh, oh, wait, wait. I have it backwards in my head. Let's, let's try to redo the thinking part. Passage. Instead of up, we do down. So we can come from this direction, but we can't come from the other direction. So the arrow means what directions can you come from? You can walk onto this tile from the left, from the right, and from the bottom, but not from the top, right? Let's test this out. Hurry, quick, quick, go fast. Gotta go fast. Okay, so it works from the top. Does not work from the bottom, right? We're still able to... You know why? Because region restrictions is overriding. It's overriding the tile set. So right here, it's saying you can't walk onto this from the bottom. But I manually selected that you can complete passability right here. So that's overriding it. And this will lead us with the same issue we had at the beginning. We just can't walk on it at all. Right? Yep. The same, like, 
literally region restrictions is doing nothing here now. But maybe if we get rid of region restrictions and we go into the tile set and we make some specific directional control in here. Let's say that from here, if it is passable from a certain direction, you can't get on this tile from the bottom. You can't get on this tile from the top, but you can go left, right, and up. You can go left, right, and down from here. You can you can come from the bottom, the left, right. You can come from the top, left, right, but you can't go. So we've got these both passability for direction dotted in between the two, the two points we want to be blocked off. I think this is the best, out of all of the methods we tried, this is the easiest and the best way to do it, probably. Okay, from here, it works fine. We can't walk down, and from here, it works fine. We can't walk up. That That's, that, that's it right there. We did it, we did it, we made it work, we made it work. But we need to test how the large sprites look. We've been, we've been running around as toaster for a, long, for a long time. So let's go to our system and change our, our starting character to like a, a, a tall sprite and see how these maps w look without a toaster instead of a, you know being, not everyone's gonna pick the toaster. I'm okay with that. What about from here? That looks fine. This looks a little funny. This one, I'm not gonna lie, looks a little funny. We might wanna make the doodads, the table, a doodad. Cause you can see you jump on the table. Let's just jump on the table. Jump on the table, woohoo! But you know what? Of all the things that we've tried to do, this is, this is the best option. Technical, technically a player could jump on a table. You could get up from a chair, stand on your chair and go on the table. The, the best way to do this is to event this and draw new sprites so that when you're when you're on the chair, it looks like you're sitting down, right? So you have to walk on it, and when the player touch, the sprite changes. You do an actor image change. Why do I have a plate over there? There's just a plate on the ceiling. We're going to ignore that. That's fine. And then also changing these to doodads. So if I had all the time in the world, I would make these as doodads and put them in one tile so that I can specifically change the location of all this stuff. And I would make it so that when we walk on the chair, the image actor image changed to a sitting sprite. But I don't have the time to draw sprites like that and I couldn't do it if I tried. It would be very, very messed up. So we're gonna have to just accept that this is a thing, this is how it works, and you can jump on a table if you want to. Okay, let's get an event in here. Who's the NPC? Who's the NPC? Will Black, are you the fisherman of this village? Who's the, who's the NPC? Hey, Hunting Swan, how are you doing? Thank you so much for the host earlier. Didn't stop to, to talk to you. How's your day going? You do enjoy fishing. <laughs> We're gonna make a MF Will Black the Fisherman guy. Let's generate let's generate a map. We gotta get this quick. Alright. What do you look like, Will Black? What color? Give me some details. What does your fisherman guy look like? If you don't uh, speak up soon, I'm just going to pick something eventually, and uh, and that's going to be the guy, the dude, the man, the fisher, MF Will Black, the legend. I'm going to randomize a bit, and give uh, Will a chance to to s light brown hair, blue eyes, stubble beard. Well, Hunting Swan says, not bad. My stream ended a while ago. Otherwise, it would have been uh, more people. No problem. No problem. Okay. So, we got uh, light brown hair with blue eyes and a stubble beard. Okay. Let's find something. We need something that looks like a fisherman. A 
scruffy fisherman. We're gonna go with this. We're gonna change his hair a little bit. Let's go with uh, let's go with some brown hair, like that. Rear hair, I don't know. What about like that? Uh, a beard. He's gonna have some stubble. Definitely gonna have some stubble. Regular that, regular that. His eyes, kind of like, uh, he's a fisherman. I think that's that's a good fisherman eyes. We've gotta change those colors to some blue. He's he's a friendly host. He's, he's not a, um, he's not like supposed to be intimidating, right? So he's not gonna have any furious brows he's just gonna be like kind of a hey man I just fish and and cook fish you want some fish I got fish so let's just go with like uh, some neutral eyebrows maybe maybe a little smile you know he wants to be welcoming to his customers a little smile how's it welcome to the shop there you go uh, and a clown nose no I'm just kidding and we'll put a little bit different clothing probably wait let me see did I miss anything else just thinking about the table thing, Drifty, what you could do is have a row of regions in line with the base of the table that would change the tile set between two versions of the tile set. One with the top of the table star passability and one with the top below the player. There's a lot of different things we could do with it, Hunting Swan. Like I said, we could even make custom sprites for the player sitting down. But it's just like I don't have time to do all of that stuff. Maybe eventually. Maybe eventually. He's out there catching fish. He's gonna need a coat. So will it make sense he'll have a coat like that? A little bandana underneath all that, sure. Cool. And a monocle. No. There you go. There he is. I think we found it. So we're gonna call this one MF underscore Will Black. Unless you have a better name, Will, that you prefer. We're gonna export this as MF underscore Will Black. And then we're actually going to import that same one and then put this down here and then export that on top of it and overwrite it. Yeah. And then Battler, export. MF underscore Will Black. And then we'll save uh, the JSON as well. MF underscore Will Black. There we go. Drift, if you ever need custom sprites, message me on Discord. IGN is Yogi. Cool. I may, I may do something like that. I always need more sprites. Um, custom busts of of the a main a main male character a main female character a, a pixie um a good looking pixie and a toaster i mean i like the the artwork i have now but it's there's always room for improvement and i do want like a bigger bust that i can show picture more visual novel style it's not going to be a lot of reading but i want the pictures to be popped up as well you got to slide them into the dms and wait a day Okay, we got our character. Let's put him in here. He is our fisherman. So we got our new MF underscore Will Black. Drifty wants a bigger bust. <laughs> Let's, uh, just gonna, what's he gonna say? He's gonna say something. MF underscore Will Black slash name we'll just go like that we'll capitalize to make MF think it's an abbreviation for the first middle name or something like that and uh, he'll say welcome to the diner have a seat and I'll be right with you.
menus, and I'll be right with you, period. Menus are on the tables. And uh, that'll be short and sweet. We'll select uh, the, I, the uh, character. No, we, we don't want to select the character yet. We have to do something first. Okay, so this is a thing that I do to all the sprites that we do with the auto generator. We're going to stretch them out. Okay, so we can't have the default chibi sprite. We need a stretch sprite. So we go to where we saved it inside the game. RPG Maker, MV, Natural Explorers, Characters, IMG Characters. And we find MF, Will Black. We just type it, MF, Will Black. Okay, and then I've got a macro thanks to Crown, uh, Royal Crown Code, to resize sprites. So we're gonna take this, uh, uh, what is it called? Code, uh, script, whatever. And we're gonna do that. And now we stretched it out, simple. It even saved it for us. We shouldn't have to do anything else now. It should have just overwrote the file. We just run a code on it. It's a, it's a, it's a code, it's a script, it's a, Repeatable process. It's a, there's a word for it, and we have the tall, stretchy sprite version. We auto generate something, and then we click. We load it into Photoshop. Click play. I mean, we had it took a while to set it up, but once we set it up, it was like now we just press play, and it stretches it out. Um, it doesn't work with all things, right? And sometimes I have to manually edit a lot. But if you use the auto generator, and don't mess with that at all, and you don't have a lot of auto generator parts like custom parts that change the sizings, uh, it'll work with anything you put in. And now, when we talk to him, he'll be the same size as the other characters in the game. And you can see he's not a chibi sprite. He's been stretched out 150%, and his head size has been reduced by down uh, to 75% of its original, so we've got that going on. Welcome to the diner, have a seat and I'll be right with you. Menus are on the tables, and we can have the player go right here and... I don't know, it doesn't feel quite right. It doesn't feel quite right. But you know, for now, that's gonna work. It's gonna work for now. We're gonna, we're gonna polish, there will be polish. Why, okay, now this isn't, now this isn't working, so we have to put the chair. It's so strange that it was. Maybe it's because the toaster was a different sprite. So, oh shoot, doodads are right here. We're gonna edit one doodad, and I think that's where we're gonna end the stream. Edit the doodads. Let's get this, um, the last one we did, I think, which would be right here. Nope, right here. Nope. Right here. Yep. And change the layer to four and accept settings. It kind of feels better. Finish our edit, save and close. Kind of feels better just being blocked off, like this tile blocking it off. Cause then you can't jump on the table and it just, it just it will work better. All right, back to the tile set. I guess they knew what they were doing. The only way I can get around this being different is if I, if I put this on two different tiles. I make the table smaller to fit in a 48 by 48. But that was the point of putting it on this in the first place was to make it bigger so that it looks better, right? Higher pixel density. So whatever, we're gonna go like this. It'll let the player like hit a wall and stop so that they can be like, oh, I'm at the table, enter to check out the menu. And we can call a picture for the menu. If a single breast isn't larger than the head, you're doing it wrong. <laughs> oh, man. Thank you, Sugar Zuzu. Yeah, yeah, I'm trying to do a lot of things here. I always check out the Discord after the live streams, and I hang out in the Discord for a few minutes, um, like, actively, and... 
and then I passively have Discord open all day long. All right, this is where we're at for today. We didn't get the third house. I always think I'm going to get more done than I actually do, but it feels good. We walk over here and we hit enter. Like it, it blocks us off so that we can go here to, to sit down and check out a menu. It, it doesn't feel very crowded. You know, it, there's still a lot of open space. This is a very nice spot over here. This all feels good. Maybe we could put something right here, like one thing right here. Um, we could put something something else in this little area, like a rug, maybe a rug. Um, we can put some kind of divider right here and then add a little bit of a polish. And then that plate is gonna stay there for now. We'll, we'll deal with that plate later. Don't worry about the plate in the ceiling. You know, Will Black got frustrated one day and he just flung a plate and it just got stuck in the rafters and it's just gonna stay there. And we'll make things a little more interactable. And uh, from the menu, you can order things, and then that will that will uh, initiate an auto run uh, that will do like a move event, and he can come and serve you the menu, and um, and like it'll be like a shop processing, but while you're sitting down, yeah. And you can even this will be like an inn. Not there's not going to be beds where you rest, but you eat the food here, and it'll restore you here. But also there'll be like to-go plates. I don't know. I'm thinking of stuff on the fly. Guys, thank you for coming to the live stream. I really appreciate it. Every day we accomplish new things. We encounter new problems. And it's always fun to solve new problems with a, a peanut gallery, a, <laughs> a, a, a debug team. You know, I, have, I love that this is a live stream thing now, uh, at least for a while. As long as the ISPs let us and the websites are live and allows this to happen, I think it's a very cool thing. Um, everybody who's supporting by following on Twitch, that's very uh, appreciated. Follow Subbing to my YouTube channel, those things are free. Um, yesterday became Twitch affiliate, so you can su subscribe to my Twitch channel now for uh, whatever amount you want. Um, if that's so desired, it's really appreciated if you do. You can toss bits at me, and all of that stuff is registered. You know, we got the tax forms and everything filled out, and uh, everything's set up. Eventually, we're going to be live streaming on Twitch only and uploading videos to YouTube the day after at some point in the future, but we need some spillover. So come follow me on twitch.tv slash driftwoodgaming. It'd be very appreciative. Uh, I would be very appreciative if you do that. Um, if you would like to get your game played uh, on a first impression video, I do that on Fridays. You can back me on patreon.com slash driftwoodgaming at any level you want for to show your support. But if you like the game be played, you have to do the $20 level. That's, that's the filter there because otherwise it's just so many people throw games at me. I'm going to miss the good games. I'm going to be playing lots of games, but may pass up on a really good one. You know, one that's been putting lots of effort and multiple people have been working on it. Money's been thrown at it. Um, so... It's, it's really like, do you want to spend the money on promotion and, um, like, like, it's basically like feedback, you know, it's just public, public feedback, it's a live stream of your game, people can tell you what they think of it right then and there, um, so that's a service I offer on patreon.com slash driftwoodgaming, if you'd like to follow me on the Twitster, I have a Twitter account as well, which is twitter.com slash driftwoodgaming, I have a website if you would like to see some random stuff. Got action sequences, just different random stuff there. It kind of ties together all the stuff, driftwoodgaming.com. If you go to slash games, there's a, w a place where you can download my 2000 and my early 2016 game, free to play game that I put out with RPG Maker MV. Neo Soul Gamer, shout out to Neo. He's a really cool um, guy, he's a really good game dev and he played through The Legend of Driftwood, my old project, and he, he grilled it a little bit, which all of his points were valid. A couple things, uh, whatever. It's an old game, it was an old game. Uh, thank you for playing it, Neo. And um, yeah, that's gonna do it, guys. Thank you so much. Smash the like button. I really appreciate it if you smash that like button. People don't think that uh, does very much, but it does make me feel the golden tingly sensation in here, in this area. So, so um, do that. I, I, I want, I want you to make me tingle. Bye, guys.